It was 2002. I was living with my boyfriend in a small home, just the two of us. The layout of the bedroom is important to the story. We had a small bedroom with a queen bed. The bed was pushed into a corner with the right side up against a wall and the left side with a small nightstand and just a small amount of room to walk beside the bed. When you walked into the room, the foot of the bed was immediately to your right, closet door to the left. So, one night, my boyfriend and I are asleep. I slept on the left near the walkway because I tend to get up to pee a lot. I wake up suddenly in the middle of the night. The room is dark, but my eyes are adjusted and I could see everything. I didn't know why I woke up, but right when I did, my dog Daisy came walking into the bedroom, walking right up to me and started happily sniffing my face like she was glad I was awake. And walking right behind my dog was my boyfriend. But something was off about him. He walked with tiny little steps, almost comically small steps, and his head was down making his long hair cover his face. But I could tell it was him. Same clothes, same hair, same body shape, etc. He baby stepped all the way around the bed and right up behind my dog. When he made it behind her, she looked back at him and then just walked away, leaving the bedroom entirely. I watched both of them the whole time this took place. I wasn't scared or confused, I was just watching. Then my boyfriend baby stepped closer to me and then leaned in over me, his hair still covering his face. He was leaned so far over me I thought he was looking for something and that's when I got confused. I was just about to ask what he was doing when I glanced over to his side of the bed. To my horror, there was my sleeping boyfriend. I cannot explain the overwhelming surge of fear and panic I felt at that moment. I was frozen with fear. I couldn't make a single sound. When I turned back towards the person I thought was my boyfriend, it quickly and swiftly leaned up straight and stepped backwards into my curtains and completely disappeared. That's when I was finally able to scream, and scream I did. I had no answers, no clue on earth what it was that I had seen. My super Christian friend told me it was a demon, that it took the form of my boyfriend. She explained her reasons, but I have since forgotten what she had told me, and for years after that, nothing like that had ever happened to me again, until 2018. It was summer break 2018. My boyfriend and I had a son in 2005, but we broke up shortly after, unfortunately. He's a good dad. We split amicably. The now ex-boyfriend stops by fairly often, and if I don't hear him at the door, he will come on in. One night, my elderly pug woke me up barking. He sleeps right in my armpit, basically, so I immediately noticed what he was barking at. It was my ex-boyfriend. He was leaning in my bedroom door, and he was just smiling at me with the pug steadily barking at him. As soon as I looked at him, I was immediately just annoyed. He woke me up. So in my sleepy annoyance, I say, What do you want? He is still leaning in my door, still smiling at me. What? I yelled, angry by that point. And he just shuts the door. That angered me even further because I felt like he had awakened me for something, but he wasn't talking or answering my questions. So I start shouting, I'm up, I'm up, what is it, I'm up! And I fling the covers off of me and in a matter of seconds, I open up my bedroom door expecting him to be standing there, but there's nothing. It's just my dark hallway. Not quite grasping what is going on, I walk all around my house trying to find him. He's not there at all. It had been so long since it first happened that I was more shocked than scared. I don't really scare too easily these days. I text him right away. He still remembers the first time this happened to me, even though he dismissed the first occurrence as a really vivid dream, despite me being adamant that I was fully awake when that happened. So... 
I was surprised by his reaction to the second occurrence. He believed me. What really sold him was my pug, Mr. Muggs. He barked a lot at whatever was leaning in my bedroom door. Something else I didn't realize until I was texting my ex is the fact Mr. Muggs never barks at him. He loves my ex. Another sighting of an entity that looks exactly like my ex and 15 years after the first time. Very, very odd to say the least. A month or so goes by. I believe if you put too much thought and emotion into the paranormal, it can feed on that, so I brushed it off. I just didn't give it a second thought beyond the first day after it happened. It was weird, and let's just forget it happened. That kind of thing. August of 2018, my niece found a tiny little puppy in a ditch on the side of the road. I immediately fell in love and opted to adopt her. Her name is Peeky Boo, if you must know. My son and I fell head over heels in love with her. Every night she would whine to get in bed with me and Mr. Muggs, and every night I happily obliged. One night, I woke up to my son standing at the side of my bed. Mom? Mom? Can I sleep in your bed with the puppy? I was not happy he woke me. You can see the puppy tomorrow, son. But he begged. Please, I want to sleep in the bed with you and the puppy. I was not having it, so I told him, No, son, I barely have room as it is. Go to bed. He hung his head down, but he didn't say anything else. I watched as he left, and I was already feeling guilty. Just as he shut the door, I had a change of heart. I called out, Come back, son, I'm sorry. As I threw back covers and quickly opened my door, my stomach sank when I opened the door and saw nothing. The hallway was empty, dark, and quiet. No lights, no sounds. It had been a few seconds from the time my son shut my door to the point where I was opening it back up. I would have seen him so quickly I walked to my son's room, opened his door, and there he was, sound asleep in his bed. I didn't want to freak him out, so the next day I simply asked him, So, did you come to my room last night? He responded with a yes. I was relieved until he added, When I came to tell you goodnight, remember? That was hours before I had seen him in my room that night, wanting in my bed. I never told him what happened, and it hasn't happened again. I hope it never does. It does scare me. It spoke. It wanted in my bed. I talked to it. What if I had said yes? I shudder at the thought. I don't know what to make of this. Why do I see entities that look like my loved ones? I have heard other doppelganger stories, but my experience is a little different from the others that I've heard. Are they ghosts? Demons? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I'm going to preface this with the fact that I was a bit of a skeptic. I loved the idea of the paranormal, but straight up never believed in it until about half an hour ago. I was walking my dog along this usual route. It's only a half hour circuit through a well-lit and safe neighborhood, so I felt pretty comfortable taking him late at night. I'm about 20 minutes into the walk when I notice the only other person I've seen the entire time I've been out. A kid, roughly 9 or 10, walking alone on the other side of the street. This strikes me as odd as it's nearly midnight, but I decide it's none of my business and press on. Then the kid notices me and crosses the road. This is where I get my first proper look at it. They're wearing a thin hoodie, green and gray striped with the hood up, gray cargo pants and a pair of trainers. Totally normal attire, really. As the kid walked over, I felt compelled to stop. There's a lot of young families living in the area, so I assume they belong to one of them, but I felt weirdly uneasy. I'm someone who really struggles with generalized anxiety and so chalked it up to that initially. 
They reached me and took down their hood and that's when I started to actually freak out. Their face was totally androgynous and kind of rubbery, topped off with blacked out eyes. It sounds cliche, but everything about their appearance was just wrong. In hindsight, I'm pretty sure that it was unnatural symmetry that threw me off as much as the eyes, but I can't honestly say that for sure as the image seemed to evade clear memory. I must have stared at the kid blankly for a beat before it said something pretty close to, Excuse me, sir, but my friend and I are going to the shop and we appear to have lost our way. Could you please direct us at your convenience? One, I'm a girl, so thanks, demon kid. Two, I text these words to my girlfriend almost immediately afterwards so I can be fairly sure of the accuracy. Three, there was only one kid that I saw but can't rule out a second being there. Four, there was no shops open anywhere near where we were. It wasn't just the factual errors that threw me but the tone too. It was mechanical and kind of awkward, almost like if you read a Dr. Seuss book. That's what it reminded me of anyway. For some reason I felt like the kid wanted to come with me. As it said these words it kind of leaned into the direction that I had been walking in. I know it had asked for directions but I can't help but feel that the next step would have been asking me to walk it there or even worse, asking to come home with me to call someone as it was lost. I told it that I couldn't be of any help and it frowned at me and went to open its mouth but whatever weird compulsion that had caused me to stop broke and I made to walk home. After a few steps I turned to look back and the kid was gone. Like I say, I'm not one to jump to paranormal conclusions quickly and in a slightly older kid I might have assumed blackout contacts as I have them myself but everything about this was just terrifying. I can't explain why I know with such conviction that what I saw wasn't human, but either way I know it. I won't be walking that route anymore and certainly not after dark. If you can offer a logical explanation then please do because I'm pretty sure I'm just crazy. On my 10th birthday I had a few of my friends over for a slumber party and we had our sleeping bags on the floor of the living room. The living room was at the front of the house and behind our front porch. When you walked into the house through the porch you'd get to the front door. Once in the doorway there was a staircase to the left, a half bathroom directly in front and the living room connected to the dining room to the right. Left of the dining room was the kitchen behind the half bathroom. Now, back to the slumber party, we were doing whatever it is ten-year-old girls do at sleepovers when I got an uneasy feeling. There were windows behind the couch that were directly looking onto the porch. I remember not wanting to look anywhere near the windows. I was sitting on the floor with my friends when in the corner of my eye I saw something bright on the stairs. I didn't want to look, but for whatever reason I did. I looked in at the bottom of the staircase was a little boy. He was pale, black hair and had circles around his eyes. He looked calm and he was just watching. I'm getting chills just as I type this and I actually want to puke. This wasn't the first time I saw him though. I immediately turned my head and was just frozen. While I'm sitting there terrified one of the girls started yelling that there was someone on the porch and we booked it downstairs. We locked ourselves in my bedroom and sat in a circle and listened as the girl told us there was an old woman on the porch. Each of us were rightfully scared out of our minds. Then the crash happened. In the middle of talking, we heard what sounded like glass shattering. Again, frozen, some of the braver girls who didn't believe us decided to go investigate. We followed and there was nothing. Absolutely nothing was broken, but... We all heard it. It sounded like someone smashed the window in with a baseball bat. We ended up sleeping very closely tucked away in my tiny room that night. Looking back, I don't know why I never woke my parents up during any of that. 
babysitting my youngest sister. At this time, it was just me and my three sisters, aged 13, 5, and 2. I was still 10. My younger sister and I were home from school with a stomach bug. My mom had to go get my 5-year-old sister from school and asked us to watch our youngest sister. We were sitting in the living room and she was eating some snacks and had a sippy cup of water. The top of the cup must not have been screwed on tight enough because when she knocked it over, water spilled everywhere. My oldest sister went to the kitchen to get some napkins to clean up. When she came back, she handed me some of the napkins and we both started cleaning. We were on our hands and knees wiping up the water when we started to hear banging coming from the second floor. We both paused, looked at each other and said nothing. But we both had that look of, you heard that too, right? We stayed silent and kept cleaning. Then again, another bang. At this point, we stand up and are still silent, just staring at the ceiling. Then came the giggles. We heard little kids upstairs, laughing. Then the laughing turned to singing. Just little children singing what sounded like choir singing. My sister scooped up the baby and we ran outside. It was a clear day out that day and I remember once we got outside it started to rain. We had no choice but to go back inside, but we stayed on the front porch until my mom got home. I have so many stories, but it's too much to share right now. I'm 28 now, and I still have nightmares monthly about being inside that house. There are times now when I question myself if any of that happened and try to search my memory for anything that could have an explanation, but I just can't. Living there honestly changed us all forever. Maybe I'll keep going. So a bit of background story, a lot of people have been asking where this took place. I don't want to give the exact town because I am an anxious weirdo and this is the internet, but it took place outside Boston. Before we moved to the house, I spent the first nine years of my life in a house we were renting. My childhood was heaven. Absolute 1990s kid heaven. I never had any real paranormal experiences in our first home but I did have some strange premonitions that came true about family tragedies after I started getting severe migraines, which is what I'm feeling now, so I'm kind of nervous bringing this all up again. But anyway, our landlord was planning on selling our home, so we had to act quick and find a new place. I remember looking at a few homes and going to open houses with family. I remember the open house for this one. I stayed in the car. I told my parents it wasn't the right place, and they went in anyway. Later that week, we got the call that we got the house. My parents were excited to finally be homeowners, but I was still apprehensive, but also still kind of excited to have our own home. After the years spent there, they decided to take me to every open house afterwards to make sure the homes were clear. My dad still asked me to pick lottery numbers for him. We finally got ourselves moved in. It didn't take long to realize things were off. The house was a two-story. Like I said in the first post, the first floor was the kitchen, dining room, living room, and half-bathroom. The upstairs was a full bath and two bedrooms. We were a family of six at the time, so my two younger sisters had the bedroom next to my parents' room, and the basement was converted to a bedroom for my older sister and I. I never slept in there, though. I shared a bed with my younger sister in her room. The basement had its own creepy vibe, as most basements do, and that's where we saw the woman in the wedding dress the most. My older sister was brave to sleep down there by herself. The basement had this weird stage-type thing. Right by the laundry room with the boiler and stuff was this area that was just one big step where we kept some storage. To block off the clutter, my sister decorated it with those hippie beads, think Britney's Oops I Did It Again album cover. There was one time my sister was laying in her bed doing homework and my mom was in the laundry room doing laundry when they started to hear the beads clanking into each other. My mom poked her head out to see what the sound was. When she saw them swaying, she walked out and stood next to my sister just to watch what was happening. They then began to shake even more violently like they were about to be yanked off the ceiling. They ran upstairs and stayed away from the basement for a while. My mom was always scared to do laundry after that. 
She said she always felt someone watching her down there, so she would sing to herself to stay calm. I can't remember the timelines of all these events, they're all just scattered in my brain, so I'll start with the events in the basement and bedroom. In the basement, we went away on vacation for a few days, and the house, although it was nice, started to get a lot of problems, one being mice. We never saw one, but would hear scratching, so before we left, my dad put mouse traps around the house. There was a hole in the ceiling in the basement where my dad placed one. When we got home, he went around to collect and check the traps. When he reached into the ceiling, he found the trap was gone, but found something else in its spot. It was a postcard, dated from the 1930s. It was what you would imagine an old postcard to look like, stained and worn. It was signed and dated with a name we didn't know, and read, Wish you were here. I wish we kept it, and I wish I remembered more about this, but my dad got rid of it. He didn't show it, but I'm sure he was creeped out. We never found the mousetrap. The Bride in the Basement This one scares me the most, even though I didn't see it. My sister was in her bedroom when she saw the lace in the corner of her eye. She looked up, but didn't see anything. She kept doing whatever it was she was doing when she saw it again. Again, nothing. This went on for a few more times when finally she looked up and she saw her. An older woman with frizzy gray hair, looking very disheveled and angry. She had a white veil and a white lace wedding dress. The way my sister described her was that she was standing with her arms at her sides but kind of stretched out. They were by her sides but not touching her body, and her hands stretched out. My sister said she looked frozen and her face looked stuck, and as quick as she was there, she was gone. My sister was the only one to fully see her. The rest of us would just see the lace pass us in our peripheral vision. So that's why I can remember the basement at the moment, so I'll now switch to the little boy. The first time I saw him was in the upstairs bathroom. I had just finished up in the shower and was looking in the mirror and combing out my hair. I know this is going to sound cliche, but the mirrors we had above the sink were cabinets split into four, so one was slightly open which gave me more of a view of the bathroom. As I was brushing my hair, I looked down for a second and back up, and that's when I saw him for the first time. I looked in the mirror and saw him standing behind me on my left side. He had the same expression on his face as the first story. Calm, but his eyes looked sad. They were dark. His skin was pale. But for some reason I remember him wearing a type of scaly cap, but his hair was black and messy underneath it. I of course screamed and ran to my mom's room. This all lasted about five seconds. The second time I saw him, he didn't have the hat. It was the time of the slumber party. We had this banister type thing at the end of the stairs. He was standing on the last step with his elbows rested on the banister. Again, just watching. He scared me, but made me sad. My family's experiences... My older sister saw the nurse. She walked into the living room and saw a nurse casually sitting on her couch. She was dressed in the traditional old-fashioned nurse dress and hat. My little sister, who was five, was sitting in the kitchen with my parents as they cooked dinner. I remember watching TV when I heard screaming coming from the kitchen. Curious, I walked in and saw my parents trying to calm her down. She said someone was trying to hold her hand. She had her hands behind her back, playing with the chairs, so my dad tried convincing her that it was her own hand touching the other. She didn't buy that. She's 24 now and still stands by what she felt. She felt someone grab her hand. Another time, with that same sister, my mom was washing her hair in the kitchen sink. The way my mom would do it was she would lay a towel on the counter and we would lay on it and our heads would halfway hang in the sink. So while she was getting her hair washed, she was looking at a box of strawberries on the counter. She yelled for my mom to look, 
and they both watched as the brand new strawberries turned moldy in a matter of a minute. My youngest sister, she was two, almost three at the time, she used to scream and cry about that mean man. My mom would try to calm her, but without much luck. She would ask her, what man? Where is the man? And she would point to the stairs and hide her face away. The way the stairs was designed was they were mostly just straight down, but towards the end, they would turn. She would always point to the corner of the stairs. It was the fifth step. Every time we had company over, someone would fall down those stairs once they reached the fifth step. We never told anyone our house was haunted, because honestly, who wants to tell people that? But every person who came over and fell on those stairs said it felt like someone pulled their leg down. They all fell the same way. It happened to me, my mom, and one of my other sisters, and yeah, it did feel like that. One time my mom was home alone. She was sitting on her bed when, out of nowhere, a pillow was thrown in her face. My parents saw a teddy bear get picked up off a shelf and carefully be placed on the floor, like gently, just in the air. Same thing with the Cheerio another time. There was also a Furby we had. What a kid in 2000 didn't have one. Thing would go crazy at random times, saying things Furbies didn't even say. We took the batteries out and tossed it in the basement. It never stopped, even without batteries. We ended up throwing it out. When we were getting close to moving, we had one neighbor tell us that way back in the 1940s or 50s that a nurse lived there with her son. I always wondered if the little boy was there with his mom, the nurse who was on the couch. Another neighbor came by once for a cookout. He had a bit too much to drink and went on to tell this crazy story about the whole block was notoriously haunted. We never told anyone about our experiences. It was guaranteed that he didn't know. My mom has had many, many strange and paranormal encounters in her life, including meeting her own doppelganger as a child. She's had many stories to tell me and I grew up hearing them, about the flying cups in her bedroom and the vacuum cleaner running by itself when she was a little girl. However, there's one that still baffles me to this day and I want to know if anyone else has ever seen this, this creature, or knows anything about it. Years ago, before I was born, I'm 18, so it's been a good while. My mom has been staying at her best friend's house for a while. Her best friend was married, so her husband was also there, but he and my mom barely interacted with each other when she was there. He always kept to himself and still does today. They're still friends. As my mom put it, she was parked in her friend's driveway, waiting for her friend to come out so that they could leave. My mom was alone in the car, fiddling around with the buttons and such, and she glanced in her rearview mirror. What she saw horrified her, as she said. In the rearview mirror, she saw a large black dog walking on its hind legs. Now, I am a skeptic of everything, so I asked my mom if it was just a random big old dog standing up on its back legs and using the car for support. She insists that no, it was walking like a human. It didn't touch her car. It walked along the sidewalk like a human would. It didn't once get on all fours. It walked on two legs. She swears this and I can see by the genuine terror in her eyes that she's telling the truth. I asked if she saw the legs. She said as soon as she looked behind her it had vanished into thin air, gone like a ghost. When she looked around there wasn't a single dog or person in sight. And that's not the scariest part, for me at least. My mom visited her best friend again, not at the house, she hates that house now, a few years ago and the subject of spirits came up. My mom told her exactly what she told me about the dog or whatever it was, walking behind the car in her driveway because she'd never told anyone. Her best friend looked at her, pale in the face and said, My husband told me he saw that too. It walked on two legs. Two people saw the exact same creature 
in the same spot at different times. I've heard legends of dogs and how if you see it so many times it signals a certain fate or fortune. But what was that? Have any of you seen anything like this? I'm terrified because I just passed my driving tests and if I see this thing or anything remotely unnatural in my rear view, I'll actually have a heart attack. I want more information on this walking dog. Is it some sort of omen or warning? Was it just that house that haunted? What did my mom and her friend's husband really encounter those days? Nowadays we have a backup camera in our cars. I don't ever want to see inhuman legs walking like that in my camera. I already have a bunch of eerie things going on and I don't want to be any more afraid than I already am. I moved across the country a few months ago for school and I live in an off-campus apartment that's leased by the school. I've been having some very strange and frightening occurrences in this apartment and I have to tell someone about it and hopefully get some insight on what I should do. The first thing I remember happening was very mild, as most paranormal experiences start out. I was lying in bed drawing when I saw motion out of the corner of my eye. And when I looked up, my bathroom door handle slowly turned and the door opened. Mind you, it has a long handle so I could clearly see it turn and this door is a pain to open, let alone on its own. I stared in disbelief for a couple of seconds. A million rationalizations were running through my mind and I couldn't make sense of any of them. I don't remember being scared. I was just extremely confused. This particular door opens on its own every single day without fail and multiple people have claimed they felt something tug on the door when they try to close it. I've also had some absolutely horrifying sleep paralysis episodes which might not be related but I feel are worth noting, where a tall silhouetted shadow figure emerges from that door and creeps towards me until its hands are around my neck and I'm gasping for breath. Side note, I've made it a bit of a habit to close the door whenever I leave and after I regain consciousness from these episodes, sometimes the door will open. That might just be me being forgetful though, at least that's what I tell myself. Doors opening and nightmares weren't even the beginning of it though. One night my roommates and I were in the living room when all of a sudden there was a giant cluttering sound coming from my room. It sounded as if though someone was rummaging through my stuff very violently. We all looked at each other and immediately thought someone broke in, so we armed ourselves and cracked open the door only to find no one in the room and all of my belongings scattered around my room. My tapestries were torn down, my makeup was thrown around every corner of my room, and my bed sheets were ripped off. I've had a lot of paranormal occurrences in the past, but in that moment I experienced a fear I've never felt before. My roommates and I saged our apartment after that and things were okay for a while. Aside from my door opening and the occasional fallen object, things quieted down for a bit. I became heavily involved in my schoolwork and didn't really have time to think about demons. They were really the least of my problems. But today, things have begun to escalate. As I was sitting in class, my roommate walked in with a startled look on her face and said, I thought you hadn't left yet. I raised my eyebrow and she explained that as she was leaving our apartment, she heard her name being called from my room. She responded, Yeah? But didn't get a reply, so she just left. My roommate's not the one to make stuff up like that and... Her family are very cognizant of the paranormal world. I told her that was really strange and hoped that it was a one-time thing, but apparently not. We got home from class today and all of our cupboards were open and both of our bedroom doors were locked. We exchanged our WTFs and went to investigate. We searched the apartment for something or someone but to no avail. 
We met back in our kitchen and talked about what was happening when all of a sudden we heard a loud crash come from her room. Simultaneously, we stopped conversing and I said, You heard that too, right? She immediately went towards the sound and discovered that her bathroom door, the closet door, and the washer and dryer were all open. We didn't say a word, casually left the apartment, and haven't come back since. So what do I do in this situation? I have ten weeks of school left and unfortunately switching apartments and moving out isn't an option. Thanks in advance for your answers and even reading this far. This just happened about an hour and a half ago on my way home from work. I live in central Texas, San Antonio to be exact. This whole incident happened in the span of maybe 30 to 45 seconds, maybe a minute, but it felt pretty quick and surreal. I was driving on a short stretch of elevated highway, Wurzbach Parkway if you know the city, traveling northbound between 281 cutting over to 35. I was passing the airport, just past Thousand Oaks, where the highway straightens out for a few miles until it slopes to ground level. It was raining and there are not many street lights on this part of the highway. I was traveling about 60 or 65 miles per hour. My car is a little sedan so I had a low view of the road. I was the only one on the highway in either direction, aside from a pair of headlights several miles behind me. In the distance ahead, maybe a half a mile or so, I saw what looked like a man, a human outline, running or jogging on the right hand shoulder of the road. Aside from it being nearly 1am and on an elevated stretch of road, I didn't think it too odd. There's lots of drunks in my city and stranger things have happened. Nonetheless, I moved from the right lane to the left just in case. As I approached I became aware that this silhouette was not getting taller, as you would expect as your perception shifts. Instead it stayed the same height. I estimate maybe three or four feet tall based on the fact that its head came to about the same height as the hood of my car. I slowed down to about 50 to 55 and stared at the back of this thing, trying to make out details through my rain-soaked windshield. As soon as I got close enough for this thing to be fully in my headlights, it dropped down to all fours, as if it was trying to mimic an animal. I know this was not any animal I've seen. Its size was that of a medium-sized coyote, but it was running distinctly like a person attempting to run like an animal. Its hindquarters were raised up in the air and I could clearly make out buttocks, and its legs kicked out sideways. If you've ever seen documentaries about feral children, it'll give you an idea of the gait that I am attempting to describe. The only thing is that no human I've seen could run on all fours at the speed this thing was going. The creature was entirely naked and oily black and smooth. The rain glistened off its skin with a shine like wet black marble or obsidian. I could make out muscle tone and everything as this thing clipped along. As it dropped to two legs, it lost some speed, either intentionally or just from the change in gait. It was running about the same pace as a person could sprint. I pass this thing and it looks over its left shoulder towards me. Its face was flat with a flat wide nose. It had big eyes. I could see the whites and dilated dark pupils. There was no eye shine which I think is unusual, just those eyes against the black of its skin. Though it never looked directly in my headlight beams, so that may be inconsequential. It opened its mouth at one point as it was looking at me as it passed. Its teeth were flat and white like a human's but with larger and more prominent canines. It had hands and feet like a person. I couldn't make out any genitalia but it was distinctly male in its general appearance. It had what could be best described as a swimmer's build. Its body was proportionate to that of any other human just scaled down. No crazy long limbs or anything like that. I did fumble with my phone with the intent to try and take a photo but to be honest 
I was enamored and excited and trying to take in as much detail as possible while driving on a dark rainy road. I also didn't think a photo would show much because dark rain and the glass in my car windows. But now I'm seriously thinking of getting a dash cam. I hope that the car a ways behind me saw this thing. It was pretty obvious. I hope I've provided enough detail for an accurate report. I have no idea what I just saw, but I'm glad I saw it. It didn't seem malicious. It looked scared, like it was not happy to be up there and just wanted to get down off the highway. I got the very distinct impression that the only reason it dropped to all fours was in an attempt to mimic an animal and draw less attention to itself. He didn't have far to go till the exit, but there's a well-lit gas station and intersection there. Aside from a few apartment buildings and scattered industrial areas, the only other stuff along the stretch is a small amusement park in the airport. There is an old abandoned concrete plant in the area next to the highway. Again, if you're local to the area, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. That was my first thought as to where it could have come from. It was heading away from this though and towards a populated area so it doesn't make much sense. I'm still just floored that I saw this thing. I'm totally open to proving more details but I believe this to be pretty concise. When I was 16 I got a job as a personal assistant cleaning lady for a very wealthy couple who lived in a big beautiful mansion on Lake Michigan. It was a great job at the time, but after a while I had to quit because of everything going on and I'll tell you exactly what that was. I made $12 an hour as a 16 year old girl and that was just crazy to me at the time, but now I know it's because the homeowners couldn't get anyone to stay and work for them. It could very well be because they're both major idiots, but I honestly didn't see them all that much during the school year, so it was fine. I would work 40-hour weeks in the summer and part-time while I was in school. So during the school year, I would hardly see the homeowners and would be left alone to clean the house. I had a key, alarm code, and gate code so I could let myself in and out. In the summer months, I had help from a few other employees but in the school year I didn't. At first I loved being in the house by myself, don't get me wrong, the place was absolutely gorgeous, right on Lake Michigan so I'd always open all the curtains to let the sun shine in and blast the surround sound speakers while I cleaned. It wasn't until I was by myself that I started noticing how weird the place was. Nothing ever exactly felt welcoming about the place, sure it was pretty to look at, but it was modern and everything was hard marble and stone, not very homey feeling. My first experience happened when I was cleaning one day in silence. I remember specifically not turning on the music because I had a bad headache that day. All of a sudden, the speaker to the upstairs part of the house turned on. The way their speaker system works, you can control it by a touchpad in the kitchen, which would play the music everywhere besides the basement and master bedroom. To play music in those areas, you have to go to the touchpad and turn it on by the control pad and sync it up with the rest of the house. The reason this was so alarming was I was the only one there. I walked up to the stairs to go check out what was going on and figured out why the music turned on seemingly by itself. I looked around and called out the homeowner's names thinking someone just came in without me noticing or something but the doors were all still locked and no one was home. I shut off the music and went back downstairs, not thinking much of it. It started happening more often. I'd be listening to music and would turn it off, or it would be off and would turn on in a completely different area of the house. I brushed it off as faulty and didn't think much of it. The second, most prevalent story I remember from working was when I was cleaning the workout room in their basement. I never wanted to go in this room and I really couldn't tell you why. Something about this room was weird. It was super cold and dark and I just felt really anxious in that room. I definitely tried to avoid it but my boss would get mad when dust would build up so I forced myself to go in there once a week to tidy up. Anyway, I was in the workout room using a broom and a mop. 
I remember sweeping up the floor and propping the broom against a machine while I used the mop. Suddenly, the broom fell over, hitting the wall, the baseboard, and the floor as it fell, causing three distinct knocks. What I heard after scared me so badly I refused to go into the room by myself ever again. Immediately following the knocks made by the broom falling, three knocks responded in the exact pattern the broom fell, but it was coming from inside of the wall. I know what you're thinking, but no, it was not an echo. It was not a scared animal. It was knocking. Deliberate knocking. I was completely alone in a big, quiet house in the middle of nowhere and someone is knocking back at me from inside the wall. To this day, I have absolutely no explanation for what I experienced. Lastly, this was the first and only time I had ever seen anything paranormal with my two eyes, and I know this time it's not me being paranoid or crazy, because I was with a co-worker who saw it too. Sometimes my boss would run out to her guest house and we would clean it before the guests arrived. So this guest house has a glass hallway leading from one main area of the house to another. I was cleaning the glass while one of my co-workers, Bob, was standing next to me talking. Just then, I catch a glimpse of what looked like a boy in a blue shirt run by. I turned my head just as Bob turned his as well. He asked me if I saw that too and I said yes. Now, those are the craziest things that have happened while I was there that I can remember. I know there's more but it was almost six years ago now but... If anything more comes to me, I'll be sure to update. This story is going to sound totally out there and fake, but it was real, and it got scary. When my son was around four, he's ten now, he dreamt of this thing he called the Garfield thing. This was very strange to me because it wasn't Garfield he made sure to add thing to it. He says it was in his dreams and it was scary. He'd either wake up screaming or just come get me in bed. I began to get concerned and started asking questions. The reason I didn't ask questions at first is because he had lots of imaginary friends and lived, he still does at some times, in his very own little imaginary world. He is an only child and where we live there weren't any kids his age to play with. I should also mention he has ADHD and is high-functioning autistic. This went on for almost a year and I finally started to probe him about this thing he was so afraid of in his dreams. I'm not sure how he told me it started, I can't remember. But in one conversation he finally told me that the Garfield thing asked him to live in the dream world with him. And he said no, but he invited the Garfield thing to come live in his room. He then shared with me that he invited it into my room and I freaked a little. We had to have a talk about you never inviting things in. That's when I started to get freaked out. His room always felt wrong. My mom hated going in there and she's more sensitive than me and my cat started to lay outside Gavin's door when he was sleeping and then he began sleeping with him. This was very unusual because my cat didn't like Gavin and was very attached to me. You know, always under my feet like a kid. I don't know why this should matter, but I will tell you that we're Catholic. Gavin became so distressed that I taught him to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ to Garfield thing if he was scared. One night, he had snuck into my bed and I will stress that he was asleep. He woke me up saying the phrase a little loud and very firmly. That scared the life out of me. I remember lying there and praying to God and every saint I could think of to intercede on our behalf. I truly believed, still do, that he was being attacked, tempted, or latched on to by a demon. I prayed in every room in the house. My godmother had told me once that she would say, Saint Michael, sick him, so I appealed to Saint Michael for help. After that, things did start to calm down some. Garfield things stopped coming to him in his dreams every night for a time. Then when he was maybe six, Garfield things started visiting again. Gavin was in school and needed his rest. Because of his disabilities, he already was having a tough time in school. 
He's a little immature for his age and kind of weird to the other kids because of his issues. Things were spiraling and I just prayed that Garfield thing would go away again. Because of Gavin's issues, he has been in therapy since he was four and the way they do therapy that young is the parent is in the room. When he turned five, he had to move to a new therapist because he aged out of the one he was with and that's when he started being in the sessions alone. I would get brought in about the last 15 minutes to be told what they worked on. He told his therapist that the reason he was acting out in school was because the Garfield thing was keeping him awake, asking him for stuff. Now he was seeing it when he was awake. His therapist didn't know what I was certain it was, but he told Gavin to do this. Tell Garfield he's only allowed to ask for one thing, a blanket because you need your rest. I had never shared with Gavin what I believed because I didn't want to scare him worse. His therapist did something I was unable to do. By having Gavin do that, he unknowingly took Garfield Thing's power away. He managed to get Gavin to believe it was an imaginary friend and he was in control of everything that happened and it worked. Garfield Thing became Garfield and wasn't scary anymore. He was like in the cartoons or comic strip. I will forever be grateful for what the therapist did because he managed to take all the evil power away and give power back to my son. We moved, not because of that, and nothing feels off in this house, although my dad still wants a priest to do a blessing and he even talked about doing an exorcism on the house. This was after my son confessed to me last week that he just wanted to end his own life. He has a therapy appointment and he talked to our priest and seems better for the moment. I know this sounds made up, but I promise it's not. It was very real and very scary. I'm a skeptic just about everything, but I know evil is real and I know demons are real too. I'm not, however, suggesting my son was possessed. He wasn't. He was being manipulated by something. I pray nothing like this ever happens to you or your family. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends. And we shall read again.